This is a video to teach you how to do a movement called arm spirals. That is the third movement out of four in a workout called the Desk Jockey Workouts from my book Field Faster in Five. Gary, um, this is a bit of a continuation from movement one, isn't it? Walcox. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, we, we also introduced this movement in, uh, in movement one, but we're going to see specifically the, the value of doing it, doing it here. So um, the arm spirals basically are about how we can sink our arms up into our spine, um, which hopefully is not too great a leap to make. But if you start to externally rotate both hands. Now, externally rotate, okay, okay so some people may not understand that. So when you say that, what do you mean by that? Okay, so we're gonna take our arms from a resting point here and rotate them externally, which means outwards. So we're gonna take our arms out, taking the palms out towards the side via the front. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, we'll be able to just see a natural... <coughs> so I'm just standing up straight, yeah. just in a relaxed, yeah. kind of straight fashion. And so I'm going to move my arms. Yeah, let's just watch what happens when oh, you nice. move your arms. So we'll tidy this up, but as you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, what you'll naturally notice is it starts to lift your rib cage. Yeah. Um, and that's as the arm rotates and the scapula, the shoulder blade on the back, start to come together lifting the rib cage up and that's going to stretch all of this tissue here which we know when we're sat at the desk can generally be a, get nice and so compressed and short yeah okay. um, and obviously everybody's aware of bad posture um, and so we're going to try and explore good posture getting a stretch through the chest muscles but coming from the um, arms i just got to say that it actually feels really nice just to be in this movement. The first thing what we don't want to do is to, is to attain the shape because that's what we know the shape should be. So we're going to feed it in. So again, what we'll do is start lower down. So I'm going to get you to take your hand and just rotate your hand slowly outwards almost until it can't rotate anymore. And then you come up a section and you'll start rotating the forearm wow. and you'll start to feel the bicep. And then the bicep in the upper arm, you start to turn that around going outwards and finally you'll feel as you get bunched up if you allow the scapula to slide um, the two shoulder blades which we'll look at from the back in a minute will go back towards each other and will pick your chest up yeah so what we don't want is this idea of just lifting the chest up but actually feeding the movement until the chest so there's a subtle up. difference there isn't there because we can easily you know just get to that end position quickly yeah and we think we're doing the exercise correctly 100 percent. that's why but i you, want to bring it up but you're saying just go so let's just try that again. So going from the hands first until yeah. they can no longer move. So then feeling the elbows, then feeling the upper arm. And you know, I can sequentially feel my shoulder blades uh, and my upper back muscles getting closer and closer. Yeah. And it, for someone like me, who's obviously very tall, um, you know, I have struggled a lot with my posture. Yeah. And I am actually very much working on those upper back muscles and stretching out my pecs which are very, very tight yeah. for many years of being hunched over. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, what we don't, we, lots of people will have been told to stretch their pecs. Lots of people have been told to do strengthening exercises um, in the upper back. But what we, if we can sequentially create correct movement through yeah. the arms into the shoulder, scapular, rib cage complex, then those muscles will naturally stretch. Yeah. And it's, that has, has a, seems to have a longer effect or a more valuable effect because we're actually getting the bones to do the thing that they were supposed to do yeah, initially. For, for me, Gary, this is one of the, the big strengths of your approach compared to a lot of the conventional approaches. It's, it's looking at the body in 360 degrees. It's looking at it from all planes, from all angles, and actually teaching the correct movement. So the, po the posture sort of naturally follows. Yeah. That's my sort of understanding of... of, of I think we, what we're trying to do is get the posture into the right place so that the muscles follow. It's the muscles that will then go, oh, I have to be here, I can stretch in this position or I need to shorten in this position. Um, because that, if you're in a desk, if you're a desk jockey, and you spend your day at the laptop like this, then those bones are stuck in a certain position and that's what makes the muscles short or... Yeah. So this is a, a good practice for pretty much all of us these days to do on a daily basis. Yes, many people are <laughs> yeah. running around, heads forward, shoulders forward, sitting yeah. at a desk. Um, so okay. yeah, definitely. So should we just show the camera from the side now a little bit so yeah. that you can see exactly what should be happening? Yeah, so, so from the side would be a nice view. So if you... I'll come here. Yeah, I think so. So do exactly the same again. So start with the hands. Okay. So I'll start straight. So I'm starting with the hands. And I'll rotate through the hands. They've gone to their mats. Yeah. Follow it through with the elbow. Allow the bicep to go around. And then what you start to see is this shape here. 
So you feel the ribcage lifting at the front, which might put some tension into your abdomen. Um, and you'll also see this shape here. So we're starting to get the nice spinal shape. Now, what we didn't do on the previous one is let's now experience the opposite. So you're gonna, once you've got to your end, start to take the hand in. Inwards until it catches with the elbow, rotates the upper arm inwards wow. and starts to bring the shoulders into now what we might consider bad posture. But what you feel here is the scapula slide far apart and he's now gone into a hunch. And what's my head doing? Yeah, so your head, just try and keep it over your pelvis. But come out again now. So turn the hands out again, turn them out again. So feed the arms up to the shoulders. The shoulder blades will drop down, pull back and lift you back up tall. And then you're going to go from one to the other. And so we're actually going to create an experience in ourselves of this actually experience this bad posture position which lengthens all the tissue in the back here into a good posture position which lengthens all the tissue in the front here, shortening all in the back and create an experience in your brain of how to actually access both. Well, Gary, um, it's, it's interesting because I have been doing these, these uh, movements for, for a little while now and you know, like with all movements, it's easy for me to pick up a few bad habits and not do them maybe as optimally as I could. And clearly they, they can still have benefit when, when doing it that way. But even doing this video with you now, I'm realizing a few little tweaks that I can make, particularly just doing it sequentially. Sequentially. Because yeah. then what I'm feeling when I've just done it with you now is that it's not just opening up and uh, moving my rib cage, my upper back muscles, my shoulder blades. I'm feeling my arms. I'm getting... Um, I'm really getting a, a beautiful stretch in my biceps. Yeah, sure. And it, it really feels as though like my upper body's just been opened up. Great. Um, <laughs> That's absolutely the intention. Yeah. So again, biceps will be short. They get short as we end up in our bad posture position. Um, neck muscles as well. So as you stand up nice and tall here, the neck muscles in the front can, can actually shorten. Um, the back muscles, which are generally overstretched and long here, can actually get a chance to shorten. So we're, the movement itself is giving you not just the opportunity to experience the position that you don't get to, but to enjoy the journey from one to the other. Yeah. And again, the journey from one to the other enables us to have a more comfortable position in between the two. And that's just generally leaning towards ch altering our posture and helping us stand taller. Great. OK, well, that's the third movement uh, in a sequence of four. Um, so yeah, I hope that was useful. Um, I would say if you want to do this as part of that five minute desk jockey workout, remember everything in the book is about five minute uh, workouts, five minute health snacks that you can do each day. Um, I would say roughly about 10 to 12 times come out of each movement. I think that's roughly going to keep you on track for those five minutes, but you can experiment and play around and see what works for you.